Yeah, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for the kind invitation and the opportunity to speak you, to you today and this morning. I was invited to come here and give a brief overview of what to expect in the years to come in terms of financial markets regulation. Apparently, as the Vice Chair of Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee, I will give you the European Parliament's perspective of what to expect, but uh, um, a lot of things will be approved uh, today and tomorrow, but I will come to that later. But before we start looking ahead, it is worthwhile to look back briefly, as we will most certainly be haunted by some of the things we did in the last term, and one uh, thing was already mentioned, the famous MIFID regulation. I'm very happy that you have not yet touched all issues, as there are a lot of hidden things there. I like it. Now, as you might imagine, the financial crisis and its aftermath was the dominant topic over the past years, not only in the Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee in the European Union. To put it plainly, the crisis has proven that the European system of financial market supervision and banking supervision had some major shortcomings. European financial markets have proven less resilient, less transparent, less robust and more volatile than we would have imagined. One of the key reasons for that was a supervisory system that simply was not equipped properly for its task in an interconnected European economy, or to say it very simple, we had a single market but not a single supervision. We had competition of supervision, unfortunately downstreaming. This is why one of the key issues for us was to introduce a system of financial market supervision which would be able to face up with the challenges. You know the three ESAs, EBA, ESMA and IOPA, and I think you are all very happy about them. And. Um, as it was not enough, we have now introduced ECB in the beginning of November in the banking union uh, sector taking a lot of responsibility uh, which national authorities had, not what EBA had. And that is one of those important issues for the months to come, how the interaction between national supervision, ECB and EBA will, will function. Uh, and uh, really to give you the Parliament's view, our approach is that uh, you are not over-supervised <laughs> by, by threes. Uh, we want to have that the financial sector is properly supervised and uh, one is enough. And when it's ECB, then it's ECB. If it is national authority, it's national authority, but not both. Uh, and with uh, some standards by EBA as well. I have some concerns about that. Unfortunately, <clears throat> the financial crisis has shown not only a lack of strong institution, but also of proper, especially European legislation. In fact, there were a lot of key files that desperately needed an update. So that, what did we do? Due to lack of time, I would only name a few major files. We established stricter rules for hedge funds. You remember IEFMD, the last proposal from Commissioner McCreevy. We <coughs> Uh, did legislation on short selling, credit default swaps, we strengthened the transparency and accountability of credit rating agencies, gave ESMA a stronger supervisory role in this process. We introduced a whole new system of derivatives trading via the European Market Infrastructure Regulation, EMEA, and came up with new rules to fight market abuse, the MAD MAR file. And then there's one file that has kept me quite busy, the Markets in Financial Instruments Directive, MIFID II, um, which uh, was already uh, mentioned. Thank you for that. This file, which we finished just in time uh, at the end of the last legislative period, sets the overall framework for how financial markets work or should work in European Union. Apart from that, we set up framework for a proper banking union. So some of those things we did for the whole European Union has to be, had to be adjusted for the Eurozone, being equipped with supervisory and resolution powers, and we are working on that till now. So looking ahead, what's coming up? Having looked back, so let's have a look into the future. As I have just, just outlined, we have been dealing with some major files in the past term. We have managed to finish most of them. However, we will see many of them again in terms of level two legislation. All of the major files have transferred quite a few powers towards the Commission or towards the ESAs. Unfortunately, history has proven that the Commission sometimes, 
someone here from the commission, uh, sometimes tries to turn the whole level one legislation upside down with level two measurements, and even ESAs are working on that. I was disappointed. You know I had to write a letter to the chief of ESMA because of that. Hence, the ECON committee will have a very close look at what the commission comes up with, and that's why we have established for all the files we are waiting for level two legislation, working groups which are the same uh, who did the level one legislation as long as those colleagues are still member of the European Parliament or still member of the ECON committee. I don't know why, but some colleagues have even left the committee, although they've been re-elected, so that we have a continuity on that what has been decided on level one legislation and will be brought up by level two uh, proposals from the ESAs and from European Commission. Some of this less glamorous work has already begun. It's sort of paperwork. It's not uh, something for the front pages of newspapers, only maybe Financial Times or <laughs> Wall Street Journal, but uh, sorry for that. <laughs> you know, politicians are reading other newspapers the first row. No, it's not for the front pages, but it is a serious thing which has to be done seriously. And uh, we can't give the powers to the ESAs and the Commission and then say, okay, <laughs> that's it for us, let's concentrate on other things. ESMA, for example, is currently doing extensive consultation on MIFID II. Delegated acts, all in all, there are about 100 level two measures only in this file. For the moment, we are discussing uh, technical standards for the SRM and BRRD. We are discussing um, um, proposals for the CRR and CRD, so you can imagine it's a lot of fun <laughs> and a lot of paperwork, but it has to be done very um, properly. Apart from that, there's already some serious work regarding the completion of the banking un union going on, especially, as I said already, the Delegated Act dealing with the contributions for the Resolution Fund. That is not only technique, that is politics as well. <laughs> as you can imagine, everyone says, yes, we need it, but I don't want to pay in, and um, that is not the way how it's functioning. We will have a next meeting tomorrow on the working group uh, with the Commission how to solve all these problems. And we have, of course, this special legal problem that on BRD, the European Parliament has the right to reject it. On SRM, we don't have. It's a council decision, and we try to link those things together as everything is connected with everything to strengthen our powers as well, and that not only finance ministers of the Eurozone are deciding that. I think that is what the Parliament has to deliver. The particular piece is dealing with the question of who is paying for the resolution fund. Shall the large banks with risky business model pay the bulk, or should the contributions be evenly split between all banks? You can imagine that is not only technique, that is politics. I have the impression that the Commission has been initially leaning towards the latter option, although there has been a little progress so far. Parliament is not yet happy with the Commission proposals so far, so some work is to be done, and we have to do it properly as the planning was that everything will be published uh, in, in September. And as we are now on the 1st of October, uh, we missed the date, or not we, but uh, Commission. But that shows that this really uh, a has a, a large, a huge uh, political impact. Uh, it's not because Commission is not working, it's because Council and Parliament are trying to take a lot of influence. What, all, what else to expect? I think uh, much will depend on the priorities set by the new European Commission. And uh, so we have always to understand what Jean-Claude Juncker uh, said in his speech in mid of July in the European Parliament in Strasbourg. I think the new structure, which was surprising for a lot of people, is very interesting. If it's functioning, it's very crucial if it's not functioning. So that is one issue for the hearing, especially next week when we have all the vice president of European Commission in front of us. Um, the large portfolio of internal markets that has previously been the core of financial market regulation seemed to have vanished. I said to Michel Barnier, what you did in the DG market is now done by four commissioners and minimum two vice presidents of the commission. So <laughs> that shows what you did. But um, that was a political decision. Um, 
I even heard some rumors that GD market will disappear. That is not going to happen. There will be a GD market or whatever name uh, it will get, but um, it will be redesigned uh, according to the new distribution of portfolios. Um, Mr. Juncker has proposed. We will have now a new portfolio called Financial Stability, Financial Services and Capital Markets Union. That is one of those words where we have to bring live, life uh, in in the next uh, years. Led by the British Commissioner designate Jonathan Hill, sorry, Lord Hill. That will be the portfolio that is going to be concerned with files like MIFID and other financial markets regulation. In the past years, to be open-minded, the British often had some major issues and special concerns when it comes to financial market regulation. I was negotiating uh, short selling, for example, where United Kingdom even went to the court. But thanks God and thanks to the court, our approach won. So we, <laughs> yeah, you are always thinking by yourself, did you do it properly <laughs> if it goes to court? And then you are really happy if it uh, goes properly at the court. Um, but that shows that there have always been some restraints uh, from the United Kingdom um, in this area. area. Therefore, dealing with our British friends has not always been easy. But coming from Germany, we want to have them in, to be uh, clear, because it's better to have problems with them than not to have them. And uh, <laughs> uh, that is really my, my personal conviction. It will be interesting now to see what the new commissioner is up to do to find more about this. There will be some tough hearings in the European Parliament. You know, we started on Monday with this uh, procedure. And today at 1.30 PM, we have the f uh, wonderful meeting. I heard that some colleagues call it Grill Lord Hill. And uh, <laughs> it's not me. Grill, not kill, grill. <laughs> Yeah, one group even said the other word, but that is not serious. Because before the hearing, you should be open-minded. Yeah, <laughs> that's my personal uh, conviction. To found, find more about that, we will have the hearing of uh, Lord Hill this afternoon. Given the statements I heard so far from some of the groups, as I said, this hearing will be certainly rather controversial or a lot of fun for us. Another interesting aspect of the new commission will be the new structure, having vice presidents being in charge of broader portfolios. But by now, it is hard to anticipate what kind of interplay there is going to be between the commissioners and his vice presidents. That will be, I think, on Thursday, an important issue when we have Monsieur Moscovici in front of us as um, you have to answer a lot of questions in structure as well. Who is representing the Eurozone in international areas, for example, the vice president responsible or the commissioner responsible? And that gives some indication how this new structure will function. So do not hesitate to listen our hearing tomorrow again. When Monsieur Moscovici is in front of us, you will get answers, hopefully, on um, that as well. One of the biggest issues will be the structural reform of the banking sector. We still have not managed to follow up properly on the Lee Khan report so far. However, the Commission has already introduced a legislative proposal on a possible separation between the investment banking section of a bank and the retail trading section. We have not yet discussed in the Parliament, but the file has already proven to be one of the most popular reports among MEPs. Only to tell you a story, as Vice President, I have the honor to join the coordinators meeting where the distribution of files uh, takes place. And all political groups ask for the rapporteurship on this file. So you can imagine it will be the most interesting on a political point of view for the moment. So it will be one of the most controversial reports in the Econ Committee. Don't ask me what that means for the outcome, but it means that it will be very interesting. I believe they should do as a first rough overview on what to expect in the next months. As I have to leave, as we have to prepare the hearing, sorry for that. I think there was uh, foreseen a short Q&A session, and I uh, thank you for your patience, and I hope that you will learn a lot during the whole day in this very interesting conference. Thank you very much.